college, hallelujah, and we saw him at, at uh, a restaurant, hallelujah, this afternoon, and I'm thankful he keeps his word, and he says, I'll be there tonight, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, and one thing about God, he's going to be here tonight, hallelujah, amen, how many are thankful for the mercy of God, the goodness of the Lord, hallelujah, can you shout hallelujah, hallelujah. amen, I was glad when they said to me, Let's go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And we love the Lord. He is a good, good God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you will remain standing, we're going to turn right to the word of the Lord. We're going to turn to the book of Acts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Book of Acts is the transitional book from the gospel into the purpose of Christ's coming. Hallelujah. And that is to inhabit humanity, to give power back to humanity, fellowship back with humanity, access to God by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to read just a couple of verses of Scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Book of Acts, chapter number 1. Hallelujah. And we're going to read verse 1, and then we're going to go right to Acts chapter number 2. I think we have a baptism tonight. Hallelujah. A baptism tonight. Hallelujah. The girl got the Holy Ghost last amen, Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Can you say we, we love to see people have their sins washed away in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts 1 and 1 states the former treatise. Have I written unto you, O Theophilus? Theophilus means God lover. Theo, amen, hallelujah. Philus, amen. This book is for somebody that loves God. Anybody love God in the house? Hallelujah. Now I want you to notice the very first verse in this. No other book starts with this introduction. All that Jesus began both to do. Everybody say do and teach. Till the day in which he was taken up to that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments. Every one say commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. This is a post-resurrection, amen, post-cross book. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's dwelling in people. He's walking in the midst of the church. He's giving people the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. He's doing great things. Hallelujah. Amen. To this day. Amen. And this is the purpose. Hallelujah. And in the fourth verse we read, in being assembled together with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Amen. He commanded them to wait for the promise, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I still believe that commandment is in effect today. Hallelujah. We need to wait till God fills us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need to learn to wait on God. Hallelujah. Amen. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hallelujah. And then in verse 8, he says, you shall receive power. Amen. Hallelujah. Before this, men, hallelujah, were without power, without strength. Hallelujah. Till the Almighty God comes into an individual's life. Hallelujah. There is an, a very necessary, essential, hallelujah, amen, uh, ingredient in their life. Man is incomplete without God. Hallelujah. Colossians says that we are complete in him. That states, hallelujah, man needs this completeness. And this is the purpose, amen, of this statement, hallelujah, of power, amen, that God is going to give humanity power to serve him, hallelujah, power to have direction in one's life, hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord, amen, life is a vapor, hallelujah, amen, and it's good to know the eternal God. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. It's going to begin in Jerusalem and then go, hallelujah, 
to Garden City, Kansas. It's here tonight. You're surrounded by people that have been filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, that have been baptized in Jesus. Do I have a witness in the house? Is anybody still excited that you've got the power to take you to heaven? Now, amen, we're going to turn to the first church service. Hallelujah. Acts 2 and verse number 1. Hallelujah. When you walk into a church, a real church, this is what you ought to see and hear. God recorded it to be the pattern. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Of what church should be like and how, in the concluding verses of this chapter, how God adds to the church. Hallelujah. You can't join this church. You've got to be born of the water and the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And in Acts chapter number 2 and verse 1, it states, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound. Everyone say, a sound from heaven. Hallelujah. There's a lot of earthly sounds, but there's sounds, hallelujah, amen, that are contemporary with the house of God. Sounds that you ought to hear in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, hallelujah, a sound from heaven came, amen, and filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. The power of God, I believe, will take you from a sitting position into a place where you're worshiping God. Verse number 3, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. That was the second sound that they heard. Hallelujah. They heard people speaking, hallelujah, in a language given to them by the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. As God had promised this. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, after this, it says, uh, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, it was a noisy day. It was a day of divine sound and transition. Hallelujah. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying, What to another? Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How here we speak in our own tongue. Hallelujah. Amen. And he goes into the 17 different dialects here through the 11th verse. Hallelujah. Amen. There are others that were mocking, said these men are full of new wine. But the people you're seeing worshiping here tonight, hallelujah, are full of another kind of wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And wine does have, a, hallelujah, an effect upon the individual that drinks it. The person that drinks living water, they're going to act different. They're going to worship different. And the worship seeker is going to find a worshiper. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so they asked the question, amen, they were, they were, amen, astonished with this. And Peter stood up and he said, these are not drunk as ye suppose, verse 15, saying this is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. We're living in the last days. That means the last opportunities for us to feel after God and find Him. He's not far from any one of us. The promises of God, hallelujah, can be found in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the last days, He said that He would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. So they started hearing preaching. Hallelujah. And at the conclusion of the preaching... Hallelujah, there were people in verse number 37, hallelujah, that lifted up their voice. And they said, amen, to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the correct answer was given, hallelujah, because Peter had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He was going to open the door of eternal life to everyone that wanted to follow, hallelujah. And he said, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. They were hearing the gospel in its completeness, in its fullness of promise for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. Saying, this is that. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And he goes on to say, hallelujah, this promise of the Holy Ghost, this promise of cleansing of his blood, this promise is unto you, to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. With many other words did he, amen, hallelujah, amen, testify and exhort, saying, save yourself. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to save yourself from this untoward generation. You've got to save yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't look around to see if my friend was going to go to the office. I said, I'm getting out of here. Hallelujah. This is a personal decision. I'm going to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says they that gladly, gladly, how many believe our response to this command ought to be a glad one? I'll be glad to leave this whole world. I'll be glad to leave my troubles behind. I'll be glad to go to heaven. They that gladly received his word were baptized. There was a sound of water. Hallelujah. There was a sound of people getting baptized and getting a clear conscience. And I'll guarantee you when they come up out of that watery grave, there was some worship going on in that water baptism tank. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And there, hallelujah, amen, was about 3,000 souls added. Hallelujah. That 3,000 said, I'm in. I want this. Hallelujah. Praise God. So 3,120, amen, in this first church service. Amen. God did not intend for church to be dead. He did not intend for church to be lifeless. He came into this world to totally change the way that church ought to be. Can you shout? There ought to be some sound. Hallelujah. Coming from a worshiper. Coming from a preacher. Coming from the redeemed. And I want to preach tonight with the help of the Lord. Amen. The sounds of Pentecost. Somebody say the sounds of Pentecost. Hallelujah. How many want to hear the sounds of Pentecost when you come to the Lord's house? I want to hear somebody talking in tongues. I want to hear some hand clapping. I want to see God touching some lives. I want to see the wind of God blowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And could you, amen, pray for somebody, including yourself, in this house this evening. And say, God, I want you to touch each and every one of us. Can we pray together right now? There needs to be prayer heard in the house of God. God, we thank you for the house of prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to be in your house, your presence. We believe you to do great things, God, for your glory to be seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your power to be, amen, seen and experienced in Jesus Christ's name. And the church said in Jesus Christ's name. And let's clap our hands to him one more time before we are seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And God richly bless you this evening. Amen. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we see that Jesus, uh, amen, is assembled together with his disciples. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving a command, hallelujah, that they were not to leave Jerusalem until they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. It was going to be a transition. Hallelujah. Amen. From the law and the prophets to the place where, hallelujah, God said the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth his way into it. God was getting out of the form of rote and ritualism and getting people into the power of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel him here tonight. I said, I know he's here, amen, this evening to do a work in the lives of his people. 
Amen. This had been foretold by Jesus. Hallelujah. Even the plan of salvation so that we can compare Scripture with Scripture. Amen. In the Gospel of John, amen, the first miracle that was recorded is God took ordinary wine in some imp- or ordinary water in empty water pots and turned it into wine. Amen. It was significant because the first real miracle of our life is where God fills our emptiness with the new wine of the Holy Ghost. And God puts new wine. Hallelujah. We don't drink the old wine that we used to drink. We don't get high on the things we used to get high on. Hallelujah. There's something that came from heaven that is satisfying the souls of humanity. It's called the Holy Ghost. I said it's called the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is, hallelujah, amen, labeled new wine, amen, and hallelujah, amen. If you know anything about wine or alcohol, it changes the way, amen, you walk. It changes, amen, people that wouldn't get out on the dance floor when they've had and imbibed a little bit, they get out and dance. Let me tell you, people that were introverted when they get the Holy Ghost, they become worshipers in the house of God. They lose their timidity. They lose their introvertedness. Hallelujah. Can you say praise God? Amen. And the Holy Ghost, uh, hallelujah, did this to these believers, but it was foretold. Amen. He also said in John 3 and 5 that except a man is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of of God. These things were foretold. He was pointing to a day where he was going to redeem people through his blood, through water baptism in Jesus' name, through the spirit of the living God inhabiting the believer. He said, I will walk in them. I will dwell in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. It's good to have a God that has promised to forget and wash away our past. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter, amen, number 7 and 37. The last day of the feast were familiar. Amen. Most are with this scripture where Jesus stood and cried. It was the feast of tabernacles where the priest would pour out water. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was at that time, amen, of that ritual of the priest doing it. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being. The Spanish Bible says in the interior. That means, uh, hallelujah, where you really live. Shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Hallelujah. He prophesied to them, the Holy Ghost is coming. Power is coming. Your infilling is coming. Your ticket to heaven is going to come. Your cleansing is going to come at Calvary. And power, hallelujah, is going to come on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Hallelujah. These things the Lord foretold, even in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 28. Amen. And Isaiah is the most often quoted, quoted twice as many as any of the prophets. Hallelujah. And Isaiah, amen, saw the church age. Hallelujah. And Isaiah said, for stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to be at rest. Hallelujah. Amen. This was, amen, the Isaiah that said, hallelujah, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. He was foretelling what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. And can I tell you, it's happening tonight in Garden City. Hallelujah. It's happening throughout this world. Hallelujah. Of those that are hearing and claiming the promises of God's Word. Amen. And so this was, uh, amen, foretold. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to be exhaustive in these prophecies. But suffice it to say, 
Amen. That Calvary was not the end, hallelujah, of Jesus' work. It was the purchase of a church that he was looking for. Hallelujah. God had to wash us so he could dwell within us. Amen. I said God had to wash us. He had to cleanse us because the Holy God was going to step into our life. And everything that you and I know about the human body, there's not a whole lot of good stuff, but we'd want to live. Matter of fact, the more I know about the human body, the more I marvel at a God that said, your body is going to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And they thought they had killed and done away with Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm going to feel some believers. Hallelujah. My purpose, hallelujah, is to die for the people that I'm going to wash and that I'm going to feel. And they're going to take this good news of salvation, hallelujah, everywhere. They're going to preach this gospel to every creature. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we find them assembled with the Lord in Acts chapter number 1. Hallelujah. And all of these things... Jesus, hallelujah, had begun to teach them. Acts 1, we have read it, hallelujah. So what God promised, we are reading its fulfillment, hallelujah. There's nothing greater that God can give you than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen, hallelujah. When God gives you something eternal, most people seek the temporal. But this is an eternal abiding of God inside of the believer. Hallelujah. And so in this teaching, hallelujah, amen, these people were without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And by the way, can I tell you, it was God preaching through Peter in, hallelujah, and on the day of Pentecost. A man that could only say just a few sentences was now bringing in prophecies, hallelujah, and showing because God was in him. A Peter that was denying the Lord just a few days before and saying, I don't know him, was saying, let me tell you who Jesus is. That's what the Holy Ghost can do to your life. It could take a drug addict, get him off of drugs, and make him a witness in Garden City Games. It could take an alcoholic, hallelujah, that doesn't visit the liquor store anymore and comes to church and gets drunk on the Holy Ghost. It's worth the wait. Amen. And so here Jesus has them assembled together with them, and there is a hundred, hallelujah, and twenty. Approximately 120 in that upper room that he is speaking to. And he says, amen, you're to wait here till you get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now their wait was many days. You don't have to wait even one day. Once a promise is fulfilled, you don't have to wait for it. You can be filled tonight. You can be washed tonight. You can be healed tonight. You can be delivered, hallelujah, tonight. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. This day can change your life. This night's service can change your status, hallelujah, with God forever. Well, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to preach just a little while here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, in this, amen, so they are praying. Amen. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there. But all of the people, hallelujah, that pray to Mary, nobody in the Bible ever prayed to Mary. Mary prayed to Jesus. Mary not only carried Jesus, but she had to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And she was one of the first recipients, amen, speaking in tongues. Mary, and the mother of Jesus, was a tongue-talking, one God, hand-clapping, worshiper of the living God. That's the truth. Come on, somebody. You can read that in the first chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. She was there. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, even though she carried. Amen. You talk about people saying, well, amen, my uncle's a preacher and I've got that. Amen. Yeah. She could say in her testimony, hey, I carry Jesus. But she didn't just lean on that. She said, hallelujah, I brought the Savior. He's not in me now. But he's going to be. Because I'm going to be filled, hallelujah, with the same one that I care. But now in the power, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. A revelation. Powerful thought just crossed my mind. Hallelujah. But I just wonder, hallelujah, about Mary having power over sin while she carried Jesus. It wasn't just like carrying the normal baby, honey. Hallelujah. This was the Savior. This was God Almighty. This was the first and the last. This was the Redeemer. This was the Holy One of Israel. This is the one that dwelled within the cherubim. And she was, hallelujah, amen, full. The longer she, amen, had Jesus, the bigger he got. And the longer you have the Holy Ghost, the bigger God doesn't get any bigger. He's big enough without our match, but the heavens of heavens cannot contain him. If you wonder why people get so beside themselves when they're worshiping, amen, if you think about putting the magnitude of God in a human life, it's joy unspeakable. It's full of glory. I said it's joy unspeakable. Amen, full of glory. So, amen, the first sound, hallelujah, that they heard, amen, was prayer. When you come and do a church service, you ought to hear people praying. I said this is the house of prayer. This is the place where God answers prayer. If, he said everyone that asketh for the Holy Ghost receives the Holy Ghost. If you're wondering who it's for, it's not just for a specific few. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. This promise is unto you, your children, all that are far off. We need to hear prayer in the house of God. Hallelujah. Prayer is what unites the people. Amen. Hallelujah. For the same purpose. And this is why we come, hallelujah, and we hear prayer. Hallelujah. It is one of the sounds of Pentecost. Hallelujah. They were praying in the upper room. When the Holy Ghost came in there, hallelujah. They had been praying for several days, hallelujah. But prayer, hallelujah, is, amen, where the Holy Ghost is born. Prayer is where revival is born in a church. I'm not talking about shallow prayer. I'm talking about Holy Ghost prayer. I'm talking about when you lose your pride and you pray, I need God. I can't make it without God. I can't preach without him. I can't live without him. I can't be a true witness without the power of the Holy Ghost. And so, hallelujah, amen, they were praying. And it's good to hear prayer in the house of God. That's a sign that you're in the right place. You ought to hear some amens in the house of God. That shows people have received the promise and have been reading their Bibles and have been in the prayer room. Come on, somebody. You know where I've been? Hey man, you know what they accused the disciples? They've been with Jesus. These are ignorant men. And they marveled that miraculous things were taking place. You don't have to have a whole lot of education, but you've got to be with Jesus. You've got to spend some time with the Lord. Amen. And so, hallelujah, in this, when they were with, hallelujah, one accord in one place, the Bible says suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Hallelujah. As of a rushing mighty wind. In John 3, it said the wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. 
There's nobody that's been in Kansas very long that hasn't heard the wind. You can't see it, but you can hear it. And you can see the effects of wind. One man looking on all of the windmills in Holland, hallelujah, and there was 10,000 of them, hallelujah, amen, and their blades were turning because the wind was blowing. The man in that simple observation said, 10,000 windmills can't be wrong. The wind is blowing, hallelujah. When you see millions of people get the Holy Ghost, it's evidence and proof that the wind of God, hallelujah, is breathing into humanity for the purpose of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. How many got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Hold up your hand. Look at all these wind. Come on, somebody. I'm not ashamed to tell you I got the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed to tell you I talked in tongues today. I'm not ashamed to tell you I love talking in tongues. I'm not ashamed to tell you we don't know what to pray for as we are. But there's an all-knowing God that prays and makes intercession for his people when you speak in other tongues. And so this sound, everybody say the sound, hallelujah, it wasn't a quiet church service. It wasn't a gentle breeze. It was a rushing. How many this last week heard that rushing I mean, it rattles doors. It rattles windows. If there's any gap, it gets through. Come on, somebody. You find out how well a house is built when the wind blows. Hallelujah. But God filled all the house where they were sitting. I just got to tell you something. I came from a church that that's all you did was sit. You were afraid to sneeze. You didn't say amen. You were given, hallelujah, a little thing that said at 1015, amen, there's going to be a 20-minute sermonette. And I mean, you could almost set your clock by it. You could hear a pin drop, but the Holy Ghost didn't fall. And as a little boy, I thought, there's got to be more to church than this. And I'm glad there is. And I'm glad to report to you, hallelujah, God loves it, amen, when people are loving him back. They're thanking him for Calvary. They're thanking him for the power that has been granted to them. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah, they were sitting. We're just sitting now. Now, hallelujah, God gets us. Out of our pews, you'll see in an apostolic church, people up and down. I was preaching last weekend in Texas, and once they got on their feet, I like to many times get out there and preach to folks. They wouldn't know. They were all around. Hallelujah. They didn't sit down. They were up there preaching, tongue talking, shouting amen. Men, I'm, oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking about some real men that laid down their alcohol, that laid down their past life. God changes you. He changes the way you worship. He changes the way you live. And it's a good change. Amen. In this, in this passage, we've, we've got to notice uh, they were sitting down. Hallelujah. Verse number 3. Hallelujah. It seems like as soon as they got up, Amen. Tongues like as a fire hit them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God had foretold that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after that. After that, the Holy Ghost. We don't need religion. We don't need to come into church for 40 minutes and leave the same way we came in. When God steps in your life, it's going to get exciting. It's going to put hope in the hopelessness. I feel the Holy Ghost here, right? Christ in us is the hope of glory. It removes the question mark whether God is in you. Amen. You will speak in other tongues, the Bible says. Hallelujah. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. But I say they were all 
feel. God has no respect for the person. God has the power to fill every one of us tonight with the Holy Ghost. Everyone in this house, everyone in that house wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me just, let me just pause for a moment here. The tongue is the most vile part of our body. With the tongue we can bless and the tongue we can curse. With the tongue we can repent. Hallelujah. The tongue is the communicative, amen, appendage of your body. Hallelujah. And the power of death and life, it says, is in the tongue. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Death and life is in the tongue. You've got to have the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God chose that tongue. I'm just going to preach here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It, didn't, it, it didn't take a great revelation. Amen. For me to realize God needed to get control of my tongue. I couldn't say a statement without blank this and blank that and blank this and blank. Come on, somebody. God took the cussing out of my mouth when I got the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, he'll take the cussing out of your mouth when you get the Holy Ghost. You won't tell dirty jokes anymore when God gets a hold of your tongue. That tongue will be used to worship God, to shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the tongue is used as the initial sign, amen, that you have been filled, as verse 4 says, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nobody teaches you how to speak in tongues. You don't listen to someone else and copy them. God's Spirit will give you the utterance because you don't need a counterfeit. You need a real power when you leave this church house. You're going to, and God gives power, hallelujah, to live for Him, to conquer things that you could not conquer till He fills you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, amen. The believers, hallelujah. How many have ever prayed in tongues? Notice there was a whole lot of people around you talking in tongues. Come on. That's what was happening, hallelujah, in this room. They realized that it wasn't just for me. It was for everybody in the house. Let me just ask you, do you have faith enough to believe that God can fill everybody in this house? Simon Tank, come on, somebody. Everybody that's thirsty. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Oath of the base. What God did back then, he can do tonight. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We still need power in the year 2022. We need devil chasing, sin conquering power. We need people with a boldness. When they ask for boldness, God fill them with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is the answer for a cold world is Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. They were devoted men. God chose this day on purpose because he knew hundreds of thousands of believers would come to the feast of Pentecost. Turn to your neighbor and say, God knows what he's doing. God didn't do this in a corner when nobody was around. God set Jerusalem on their ear. And religious people were mad. Because these people had power. They had prophetic fulfillment. They were doing miracles because Jesus was in them. They were having an exciting church. Because, amen, God had showed them how to have church. They believed when somebody came in and asked for the Holy Ghost, they were going to get the Holy Ghost. 
and these witnesses surrounded these believers. Amen. Hallelujah. And these believers were worshiping God to the point that people thought they were drunk. Amen. Can I tell you? Amen. The sounds of worship were there. My Bible says to praise His name in the dance. Psalms 149, verse 3. Praise His name in the dance. Dancing doesn't belong in the honky tonk. Dancing doesn't belong to worldly music. Bible says praise His name in the dance. Amen. God's got a people called by His name. And from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, God has called us to be worshipers. He put clapping in their hands. He put dancing in their feet. He put a fulfillment. When he found David, he found a worshiper. And he said, I'm going to build again the tabernacle of David. I'm going to have me a houseful of worship. Hallelujah. That makes a joyful noise. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this sound, hallelujah, was heard. And it was seen. Everybody said seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. With my first church service, praise God, nobody, nobody even could have tried to explain what was I was going to see in here. But it didn't run me off. Because I had saw this. But I never saw people worship in the house of God. I saw a hand clapping. I was in stadiums and people, hallelujah, would slap people on the back. Come on, somebody. So when I saw people, hallelujah, with real joy, and it didn't smell like alcohol in that room, and I didn't see any solo cups filled, come on, with that golden brew, but I saw people that were filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people that had spent some time, and the longer you drink, the more it's going to affect you. The more you talk in, the more you talk in tongues. I don't, do you know that you can't drink really without your tongue? Because what that tongue does is it kind of regulates how much goes down. Come on, somebody. And my Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Amen. This is God's way of showing, hallelujah, that he's got control of your entire body. Because if God gets a hold of your tongue, hallelujah, he'll get a hold of your hands. He'll get a hold of your mind. He, he will transform that individual through the experience of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These people were so amazed, hallelujah, amen, that they started mocking, stating that these people were full of new wine. Hallelujah. But that's when they started hearing preaching. Because preaching explains it. And it said, these are not drunk as you suppose. He didn't say they weren't drunk. He said, they're just not drunk, hallelujah, like you think. <laughs> Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, in this last days, God is pouring out his Holy Ghost. He said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. God is still looking for somebody that's thirsty for something real, something happy. Hallelujah. That, that makes you feel good. That's not illegal. Can I just tell you all something? Let me just, can I preach? Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Angie's not here. Amen. But the night we prayed her through, I'll never forget the night we prayed Sister Angie through. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm already getting soft and wet. My tie many times is a thermometer, how long I've been preaching. If it gets wet down to here, we've had really good church. Well, I've been drinking a lot of water or both. Amen. 
But we had church, and when somebody gets the Holy Ghost, we shout, we dance. We have a great time. Hallelujah. Amen. And I got out of, I got out of my uh, church, amen, clothes. I had on my dress pants. And, hallelujah. I put on an old jean jacket. That's all I had in my office and a shirt underneath it. I definitely didn't look like a preacher that had come from church. Amen. And I was almost home after that service. Hallelujah. And I didn't know it, but my little Toyota truck had a headlight out. I didn't notice it, but the state trooper did. And when I saw him and saw them brakes flash, I said, I'm not speeding. I don't know what, what he's after. Hallelujah. And so, amen, he pulls me over. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's got that flashlight, amen, in my eyes, and he's checking out the dilation of my eyes. And we had church that night for about three and a half hours, tongue-talking, worshiping God, dancing. Not worried about the time, just like you did when you were at a party. Amen. And I remember, hallelujah, amen, he, he had that light down there and he said, can I have your driver's license? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Insurance, gave it to him. Amen. He said, he said, where you been? I said, I've been to a one God apostolic church. Now, sitting over back there was a trooper that knew me. And this was a rookie in training. And he knew what I preached. And he was sitting back against that car just watching. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, what have you been doing over there at church? And without thinking, God is my witness, I, didn't, I wasn't trying to cause trouble I just said, I've been drinking new wine. And then I said, uh-oh. This guy doesn't know what I'm talking about. And he said, sir, would you step out of the car? And I said, I'll be glad to. And along that curb, amen, was a concrete line that had been cut. He said, I want you, amen, to walk this line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I said, I said, this line? He goes, that line. And so I got on it and I was like, I said, I'm going to get some money out of this one. I'm going to get some mileage out of this one. And when I got to the end of it, I jumped around and went, and then started walking straight. And he goes, he did not like that. <laughs> and he pulls out the breathalyzer. And he says, I want you to blow in this. And my first thought was, I wonder if drinking Holy Ghost wine registers on one of these things. I was kind of, amen. But you know what? <laughs> amen. He said, blow on this thing. And I blew on it, and I'll never forget. I don't know if heaven did it. Or what happened? But it sounded like a party whistle. And the trooper leaning against the car started laughing and carrying on. Amen. And I didn't have alcohol in the veins, but I had the Holy Ghost. I said, but I had the Holy Ghost. And that other trooper said, hey, this man's a preacher. He preaches against alcohol. He preaches against alcohol. I'm glad that there are some people that know how we live. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It'll change the way you have church. It'll change your worship. It'll change the way you respond to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Peter preaches this message so laden with promise. Hallelujah, of what God wanted to do with humanity. Amen. How they had crucified Jesus. Amen. But this, hallelujah, was what God paid for is this service here tonight. This service has been paid for. Hallelujah. You can, in, you can drink as much as you want. 
You don't need a designated driver when you leave him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I remember we carried Desi. Hallelujah. This sweet little girl in the front pew. She got so drunk on the Holy Ghost. Amen. They had to carry her. Hallelujah. We carried, amen, hundreds, it seems like, of kids back to, amen, their dorms that got drunk on the Holy Ghost in our camp meetings. Hallelujah. Amen. Slain in the Spirit. I'm not talking about ordinary church. I'm talking about Holy Ghost filled young people. Hallelujah. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, they're not in gangs. They're not cranking with a syringe. They know what they need on the inside of them. They need another dose of the Holy Ghost in them. And so Peter preaches, and there is a response. Hallelujah. Men and brethren, what shall we do? And the answer, hallelujah, was the true gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Repentance represents the cross where you tell God, hallelujah, I'm going to confess and forsake my sin. And come and tell, God will give you an abundant pardon. Hallelujah. The next step is you follow Jesus to a watery grave of baptism. And God washes away your past. Why? Because nobody under the sound of my voice wants to carry their sins to that judgment seat. And I've got good news for you. You don't have to. You can get baptized in water, full immersion in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. And your past, hallelujah, will not be remembered by God. Amen. And he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How many have ever heard a glad response to the word? You know, I'm hearing it while I'm preaching. I'm hearing some people, I remember the day. I never shall forget the day when the burdens of my heart were washed away. It made me happy, so glad and free. I sang and shouted, now he's everything to me. They that gladly received his word. Were about, you know who's going to go to heaven? Those that gladly, amen, receive the word of God, the plan of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And can I tell you? Hell doesn't want you to go to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. What I feel right now, amen, in spirits coming against me right now, is the devil hates what I'm preaching here tonight. But I don't care what the devil hates. I know what you need to get into heaven. I'm just being transparent here. This ain't the devil's house. This is God's house. I said, this is God's house. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's liberty to preach. The Bible says they that gladly received his word, stand with me, were baptized. And the same day, hallelujah, they didn't go home and think about it. The same day, they were added unto them about three thousand souls how many believe god can add to the church with that number again and again and again hallelujah the jerusalem church had over 50 thousand believers act six priest amen hallelujah got rid of their priestly garments came down to an altar and got the holy ghost they joined them you can read it in your bible Religious people said, amen, I don't need religion. I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And can you imagine the sound of 3,000 people coming up out of the water rejoicing and the joyful sound that filled the air. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I've seen sicknesses healed, but most importantly, I've seen sins washed away. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, baptism. Hallelujah. There's power in Jesus' name, baptism. God wants to have a baptismal tank in his house. He wants to see people fill with the joy that the devil tried to take. Come on, son. It's time for God to restore somebody's joy. 
somebody needs to rise up and say, devil, you're not going to keep me out of heaven. You're not powerful enough to keep me from going to an altar. You don't have enough power to stop me from getting baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 3,000 lined up. Woo. And thank God they had 12 apostles. And they were baptized and in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Amen. And then in Acts 4, 5,000, hallelujah, were added. And then multitudes of men and women in the book of Acts. Corinthians, hallelujah, church was added. A church of 70,000 people. Church of Ephesus was added in Acts 19. Come on. There was revival. There was an outpouring. There was a joyful sound being heard, hallelujah, throughout the cities round about Jerusalem. In Samaria, they were getting baptized. They were getting the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching to some people got the Holy Ghost just as well in the last two weeks. Got baptized in the last two weeks. God is still filling with the Holy Ghost. God is still washing away sin. There is still the sounds of Pentecost being heard in this world today. Can you lift your hands? Can you put some noise in the ears? Can God hear your voice? Can you put some worship? Hallelujah. I said, can you put some worship? Come on, there's stadiums that bring the decibel reading. Say, we love our team more than you. We're going to show you by how much noise we make. Come on, some. Anybody glad that God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Sounds of He cut the little Doriana Holy Spirit, rain. You want the Holy Ghost to ask for it? Repent of your sin. Be baptized. Get the Holy Ghost. Don't depart. He did it. He commanded them. Wait on. Like a wind blow through this house. Open up the heavens. Pour your spirit out. Like a mighty wind blow through this house. Rain down on us. We'll hear you talking. 